Good afternoon, uh, I'm Richard Goodman from Loughborough University, uh, I'm the e-learning systems team manager um, and I'm here today with Paul Gentle who's the director of programmes for the Leadership Foundation in Higher Education, let's get that right, um, and Paul looks after the uh, portfolio of programmes and events that uh, go on with the Leadership Foundation um, and is programme manager for Changing the Learning Landscape um, which is a partnership project um, which is between uh, lots of different organisations funded by HEFKE uh, involves the NUS, the HEA and the ALT, and that's a lot of acronyms to go at once. Um, so uh, we're just going to uh, talk about leadership and uh, the changing roles in higher education and uh, I'll let uh, Paul say a few more words. Thank you, yes, uh, in fact changing the learning landscape also has JISC involved in it as well, so it's been a really, really fascinating year that we've been working on that programme in relation to pulling the partnership together, actually learning as organisations, how to work together, what our various different strengths are, and then how we can present a, a coherent and meaningful offer to people in universities. Um, so last year was an experimental year, and this year we're we're gearing up to um, a, a, a much more strategically focused way of working with institutions that um, is about to begin later this month. Um, the leadership work of the Leadership Foundation is designed to support um, leaders at all levels in institutions, so we don't see leadership as, as something that's hierarchical, it doesn't exist simply by virtue of um, people's post or job title, but actually a kind of distributed quality that um, exists throughout institutions and that uh, every member of staff, every student, um, has the potential for, for demonstrating leadership and being part of the leadership of their institution. And we are there to, to build capacity and support institutions in, in making that a reality. So have you seen quite a lot more kind of requests for help and training and sessions coming in over the last few years? Uh, we have, we have, and uh, and I guess that there's been an increasing tendency for uh, TEL to be um, a, a part of the focus of that. Um, but it's interesting to look generically behind some of the details of some of the project proposals which on the surface look quite technically detailed uh, and appear to be about doing one thing, but when you start getting into what the real change is that the institution has in mind or, or perhaps needs. Um, there are some perhaps other driving forces behind it and uh, unpacking what the background realities are, um, um, unpacking what, what the real drivers for change are and then what the real kind of enablers to that change might be um, are often quite different from what's initially presented. And do you think there's been a kind of a change in focus from areas of leadership in higher education with the, the introduction of the fees and are we changing the way that universities work or do universities, are they coming to you with things that are different than, than they used to come in the past? Well, I think that, um, first of all, it's a very interesting position being in a UK-wide organisation where um, there are now four completely different sets of policy drivers, depending on the government of the, the individual nation, as it were. Um, so clearly a more kind of accelerated position in relation to change around fees in England than um, in some of the other nations. Um, but certainly, uh, I guess, the kind of the world that we're in of increasing instability, uh, more and more rapid change um, is kind of accelerating some of those uh, tensions that leaders have to kind of mediate um, and help those that they work with to make sense of um, in order to achieve what it is that the institution wants to achieve. And so um, there's a greater sense of, of urgency, a greater sense of how do you engage people who are fatigued by the idea of change initiatives? Um, how do you secure people's engagement and motivation in the face of what appear to be wave after wave of uh, very turbulent um, environmental changes? Yes, I was just going to mention change fatigue because that, that's something that, that, that we've certainly talked about in, in places at Loughborough because we change you know, structures and then things change again and then things change again. And, you know, I think the, we all dream of a time when you just have maybe a year when nothing changes, but I think that's probably a, just a dream by the looks of it, the way things are going at the minute, we've always just got to keep changing and adapting. And yes, to be the case. and I think that that idea of how, how you can be both resilient, um, not, not, not in the sense of being resistant to change for the sake of it, but how you can be resilient in terms of gaining strength from the learning that happens with change uh, and how you can apply learning from one context to another. Um, I guess one of the things that 
um, is a tendency for to happen in HE is that there are initiatives, projects, uh, strategic uh, planning driven um, changes uh, which have a kind of life cycle of their own and if learning isn't transferred from one into another of those then the institution doesn't learn as an organisation um, and I think much greater chance of fatigue setting in. Yeah, it's quite a tricky skill to get that to embrace a change and then try and bring everybody else along with it, particularly when there's so many changes and they're all everybody's telling you, you know, people are telling me as a manager, stop, stop changing, they don't want to change anymore. It's, it's quite hard to kind of sit down and just try and get them to relax and bring out their ideas and you know see how what what things they can all bring to uh, to the new way of working or a new idea or a new structure. Or I, mean, it's, it, I think it's interesting, Rich, the uh, focus with um, the, the drivers behind, behind research assessment focusing on impact. I think that's tended to lead to a greater sort of focus in discourse in universities more generally um, about thinking about impact, so planning for change projects with very specific impact outcomes in mind potentially lends itself to um, uh, a kind of a deeper discussion um, of, of reflection on how a project is going, how it's gone at the end, what might have been done differently and how might we transfer the learning from one initiative to another. I think it's more at the front of people's minds than it might have been in the past. Yeah, and uh, have you uh, had any people start talking to you about MOOCs? It's the, everyone's favourite buzzword, bingo, I've said the M word, sorry everyone. Um, is that, uh, is that getting into senior people's heads and how they're going to react? Well, it's very interesting because in the context of changing the learning landscape, um, at the start of last academic year, <coughs> there were senior leaders who committed to particular projects and change initiatives that they wanted to make happen across their institution where they had buy-in from their executive team. Um, and during the course of the year, um, I think one particular disruptor was the emergence of Future Learn uh, in around December. Mm. Uh, and so at that time, quite often very senior leaders were under a different sort of mandate that emerged almost out of nowhere on don't worry about that change initiative, you've got a new agenda now which is focused on getting our MOOC up and running um, and securing as much engagement by as many um, academic and learning technologists as possible in that. Um, so that was hugely disruptive um, and, but actually did make changing the learning landscape a very very timely uh, programme to, uh, to emerge last year. And I think emerge is a really interesting word because we didn't approach it with a fixed methodology in mind. Those partners that I mentioned, we all had to learn very rapidly, not only how to work together, but you know what the real environmental challenges were. And we're still learning. What we're doing is, is still emergent. I think we've made quite a lot of mistakes during our first year. Uh, it, again, for us, it's a question of how we transfer the learning from that into improving what we can offer to institutions. Uh, encouraging them to get stronger impact outcomes from any engagement they have with us this year. Yes, so mistakes, learning experiences as we like to call them. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and so what sort of things are coming up for the next part of the programme for changing the learning landscape? Well, practically speaking, one of the things that happened last year which wasn't necessarily helpful to institutions was that um, there were kind of bidding or application processes for different parts of the activity that we had available. So we had a leadership development programme that we invited people to apply for. Separately to that we had um, consultancy days that were on offer that were available to institutions to work on particular change projects and you had to bid competitively for those in a different process. Um, we were appealing to different audiences, to different, if you like, responsibility holders within institutions as part of that process. And sometimes there was far from a joined up picture within institutions. Institutions were, we were giving resources to an institution in one area, but another part which we were giving different resources to didn't know about. So in order to remedy that, we've come up with the idea of a, a single strategic conversation with an institution. So there's no application process. Um, we have resources available for institutions this year so we have consultancy um, in a much more flexible kind of form than it was last year we also have development programs we have network events um, we have um, various resources that are online support mechanisms um, all of those in order to, to kind of work out what an institution's needs are are going to be brokered through a single one-day conversation an institution um, which must involve student leaders 
and it must involve some engagement with um, an SMT portfolio holder in that institution, so there must be senior buy-in. Um, and there will also be a set of, kind of, during the course of the day, a set of group engagements which the institution sets up in order to make the most of the day um, with our consultant, our change consultant, representing one, from one of the different partner organisations, but representing changing the learning landscape as a whole. Um, will use group discussions, um, interviews with, with different individuals, different stakeholders in the process um, to work with the institution on determining what its needs are for the year ahead and from that will allocate resource. Sounds very interesting. I think important as well that you've got that, that student thing in there as well from what Rachel was saying this morning that uh, that seems to be a very important part now in the way that universities work, engage students much better than just, as Rachel was saying, filling out the surveys and they're not feeling engaged, they're just ticking boxes and the NSS. And yeah, absolutely. It's a thing that it's, it's jumping up and down about all the time. It's really crucial having the NUS in that partnership because clearly there's, again, there's national um, learning that can be can be drawn from what's happening in individual institutions about um, how the NUS can work with their member students' unions to not only advise but build capacity in and empower um, students there to to drive some of that change forward um, and I think that um, some institutional cultures are ready for that, others are learning how to deal with it um, but actually learning with the students and with the students as a driving force in this is a really exciting um, opportunity. So we're hoping that as well as students leading on um, technology enhanced learning, uh, what also is happening there is the institutions learning how to work with students on the leading in all sorts of other aspects of change as well. Yeah, it would be very interesting. I think we've got a student charter at Loughborough, which we've developed, and the university developed with the Students' Union. Mm -hmm. it's, it's signed by the Vice Chancellor and the President of the Students' Union, and it's presented, you know, this is the charter, this is a partnership between you, the students, and us, the university. Yeah. That seems to have been well received, so I think it's a step in the right direction at the very least. And it's probably a change when I was a student, you know, 20 years ago, we didn't really have that kind of thing. And, you know, now we do, but student demand is driving things like lecture capture, which is something we have installed mm -hmm. in Loughborough and uh, you know, we've been growing it slowly and the demand is coming from the students to see, you know, we would like more of this, we would like more of that. We seem to be, we managed to respond to demand, I think, the way we can. And there's obviously some, some other work that uh, helping leadership could uh, help us grow a bit further, I think. So. Mm -hmm. And we hope to pick up on some of the things that Rachel was talking about earlier today, which is the sense of perhaps not only the broadening what's available for students in response to student demand in terms of uh, a better resourced uh, offer or provision, but actually also deepening the level of uh, student engagement so that their learning is much more meaningful because it's um, genuinely collaborative, uh, working with um, the other staff members in the institution to, to, to make that happen. Yeah, I think lecture capture is a good example of that. One of our um, members of academic staff, um, they decided to pre-record some lectures so they could use that lecture time instead to do yeah. seminars and tutorials. And you know, this is the kind of this flipped classroom thing that yeah. some people talk about. But you know, this was in our very early days. They just came in and they even had changes of uh, clothes, so it looked like these were sessions were recorded at different times. But the students really received that well and you know, really felt the benefit of having that much more seminar-based. And it doesn't sort of all subjects, but I think that's uh, you know that's been a benefit of that that one particular system, and there are lots of other examples of that. So. Mm. Very good. Right. Um, well, thank you very much for talking to us, Paul. Um, Paul's session will be streamed live at 3:05 uh, on the uh, conference platform, um, and you can follow it live and uh, send us in any questions if you're following it on the internet. Um, and there'll be more interviews throughout the day uh, with uh, other people from around the conference. Um, thank you all very much for tuning in, and uh, see you again online soon.